We were muted. I didn't have my stream deck on. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> um, and welcome, welcome uh, to uh, NGD lecture about when and how to invade. And this is a lecture by Matthias Pankok and I am Mikko. Hello, hello. Uh, yeah, so uh, what's our topic in more detail, uh, Matthias? Yeah, so um, I was thinking about a topic again and then I thought of what I what I see as mistakes oftentimes in, in maybe Q level games but also in, in down level games there are so many um, um, yeah there can happen so many mistakes and invasions and I think the topic is quite important and uh, especially what I find important is to distinguish when to invade because I see many people um, invading because they are maybe jealous of the opponent's territory but mm. maybe they could have waited a bit and um, built their own territory first before invading and this is definitely something that we will talk about uh, in this lecture as well and uh, I have brought um, like 10 examples of my own games where there were invasions and I will try to explain why it was good to invade now or maybe it was not. Um, and then especially also how to invade um, because there are many patterns in invasions but these examples that, are, that I brought are mostly not really common examples but more like because in the real games the the examples from the book rarely show up it is more like there is a stone here it's a little bit different and uh yeah that's what we're basically going to look look at today yeah uh hello oscar and uh auntie i guess uh <laughs> yeah oscar Os uh, oscar's opponent yesterday was uh having problems with this topic. <laughs> he, ah, okay, he, inv so. he invaded like two places at the same time and ended up in a like huge complicated fight uh, chat for himself and like ah, okay, yeah. so that's we'll, not how you win games. <laughs> I won't uh, name that person. But <laughs> I know who we have in mind here. Um, yeah, so even at the European Championship level there is yeah. problems with this still. So. Let's hope Oscar opponent watches this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Something. And I will yeah. actually, this is so funny because I will start with the first example. And this is a game I played against this opponent. Um, so we have this example, this position. Uh, maybe I can show a few of the last moves. It is pretty clear that white is kind of taking the cash and black is building building the influence and uh, so now arises the question whether to invade the left side or not because it is kind of getting big uh -huh. and um, yeah so I have some questions before I invade and one of them is um, the area that I want to invade. So let's kind of mark it this area. Is it bigger than something I could still build? So for example, what can I still build? What is open? Mm -hmm. um. Maybe yeah, there are I mean, there is some open space on the right side, right? Right. So yeah. maybe around here I could play a move or the bottom looks pretty small. Here is also not too big or maybe this corner. Oh. But all of these areas are not so interesting. Maybe the right side can be a big move still. Oh. Center Paduk uh, says right side question mm -hmm. mark. Yeah, so the right side can be maybe interesting, and I think if we compare this right side to the to the left side, we can quickly see that the left side is bigger because um, black has already built more influence. So if I imagine white plays a move around 
let's say here. White build a bit, but black also has has his stones at the bottom. So there's not so much to build. It is just a relatively normally big area, but the left side, black has the influence on both sides. And with the next move, black can make it pretty scary. So if black maybe plays a move around here, it is pretty hard to still mm. invade this and live. Mm. Uh, that's also a good, uh, good point by Oscar that uh, half of the audience would extend J14 without thinking. Uh, yeah, that's that's mm. a good 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 uh, point that you, you have to stop yeah. at least to think other possibilities. Even if you would finally play J, play J, J14, you have to like uh, yeah. stop and think uh, this exact topic. Yeah, that's that's also true. Um, you have to know when is the right timing to invade. So if you keep pushing at some point, it will be just too late, especially if you take mm. go to here. Yeah. And for example, some people might think, OK, I will push harder by playing Hane here. Mm. But it is not that um, that um, useful because, uh, for example, if Black just harness as well and defends Black has solidified the left side and white actually didn't really get much and there is the cutting point left behind that is can be can be annoying directly mm, yeah so yeah that's also a good point about when to invade you you need to there is this kind of proverb that you only want to invade when it when the when the moyo has gotten um just as big that you can still live inside. Um, so in this case, with the next move, black can make it pretty solid. So now you should think about invading. Hmm. So that's what I did. And let's talk about how um, I will kind of let me put away these. So when I invade, I want to, when I think about how to invade, I want to think about the opponent's weaknesses. So I need something to aim at. Otherwise, if the opponent is too strong, it is oftentimes very hard to invade. So even so, if you would have space enough uh, and your opponent is just uh, like yeah, so super strong, uh, you might end up dying anyway. Yeah, let's imagine Black has another stone here and another stone like here. Mm. When you invade, he might even attack you with a really strange move like this because he's yeah. so strong outside that he can do whatever. Mm -hmm. And he can do moves that usually wouldn't work, but since the strength is there, you can do it. Yeah. So yeah, I already kind of showed the weaknesses here um, by by my defending moves. So we have this cutting point, wait, at five, and we have this some some weakness around here. Um, maybe the peep is also something that white can use. So. In this case, actually, black doesn't have that many weaknesses, but white is lucky that black is still relatively wide, so there is some space. So the move I played, or maybe I would ask the audience first, or you, which move you mm. would mm. try. Because another thing that you can always think about is reducing enough. Sometimes you could also just be like, I will try to reduce from the outside, maybe this one. Yeah. yeah. And it could be enough. But in this case, I think black can just be happy to to defend and keep keep most of it. And that's pretty much already. So in this case, reducing is not really the key. So are there any suggestions on a specific move? Yeah, chat. Your your job is here. 
uh, to figure out where. And hello, Dave and Badukbam. Hi. So, uh, Dave or Badukbam, do you have any uh, any ideas? Dave usually has like very good uh, guessing guessing right in uh, these kind mm -hmm. of uh, questions. And also, <laughs> the move I played might not be the the best move anyway. So, you can beat me here. Uh, I'm not the target audience here, but I have recently started to think of such positions as uh, Tedo Mari problems. Mm. Basically, black like G9 or G J, uh, <laughs> G9 or H9 can end up uh, being a big Tedo Mari move. Uh, can you like uh, open a little bit uh, to non-Japanese people? What is Tedo Mari? Oh, actually, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm not really good with with many of these uh, these words. So actually, Tidomari, I mean, I heard it, but I'm not really. Do you know it? Uh, I don't uh, remember what is it. Tidomari is usually translated as uh, last move. Ah, um, right, right. Uh -huh. So the last the last move to maybe conclude the position, but I'm not really sure. Uh, or the last big move um, on this board. But there are still some big moves left. I'm not sure to which extent this uh, this word can be used. So let's rather not. But yeah, say we have it. some uh, suggestions also. Uh, C11 mm -hmm. at least, and uh, D9 or E9. <laughs> okay, so one of the moves is actually the moves I played. Uh -huh. This one. Okay, then there is. D9 and E9. E9. Mm. Okay, the move I played is this one because oh, they was correct again. <laughs> um, so there are two ways I can go, one and two. So I have some space to both sides, and there is the center. And um, there's this peep. So. That's why I played here in the middle of it with a move like, which was it, C11. Uh -huh. It is easier for black to choose because black will most likely play from, from the left side. And now white has only one way to go, which is like into the center trying to use this cut maybe. Uh -huh. But yeah, I played here and my opponent actually played from this side. Hmm. And now comes another nice part about invading because when you invade, you don't have to worry about strengthening your opponent. You have to worry about strengthening yourself. Right. So sometimes we say, ah, don't attach to the opponent's weak stone and stuff, but here you are weak. So yeah. you can just attach here and try to get all the fruits as uh, maybe Jeff would say. <laughs> yeah. So this move can be sent in, maybe Black will play here. And after this, there is still some, actually this is how the game went. And now my opponent played a relatively aggressive move from the center to uh -huh. try to cut out the way. And now it is my turn to use Black's weaknesses. So there is something like, this that can already be sent here. and if black answers i can go to this direction and try to make ice here uh, we summoned chef in the chat <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, hello so this is actually it looks like white is pretty much in danger but one thing i also want to mention when you invade you have to be kind of brave because you might be afraid to die, but your your opponent is most likely also quite afraid to to lose all the territory. Mm -hmm. And if you imagine that White lives here very comfortable, comfortably, um, Black actually doesn't have enough points to win, and so the game can be ended like that as well. It is not as clear as a group dies, but. If you live inside and the opponent doesn't get enough comp compensation, then um, yeah, you can just win like that. 
so this is one of the examples where an invasion is necessary and it can also be relatively deep because there is the space. Uh, uh, there was a question also. Uh, yeah. uh, I was thinking E6, E5, F9 as follow-up. Is that the bad idea? E6, so wait, E6, F5. Ah, e5 and then, e5 f9. and then f9. Yeah. So this one is probably also a way. I'm actually not sure if the way I chose in the game was good. It is a bit risky. Um, this one has the risk. No, actually, this, this is fine. Um, I'm just worried that this group might become heavy. For example, black plays like this and then from above. Maybe now white doesn't have a clear weakness to use. In the game, I played like this because I knew that if my opponent caps from above, I can still use the weakness here and I have a specific plan on how to make eyes. And that's something that you need. Otherwise, you could also play a move that is a bit lighter, maybe like this one so that the opponent cannot easily cap and then with the idea of maybe giving something up right. that is also an important strategy when invading you need to be flexible and you need to you need to be uh, able to give up some stones uh, even though you might love them very much so um yeah that's that's just the cruel part of invading but actually also the nice part, because you don't have to worry so much about every little detailed stone and every point. You you just have to worry about the important area that you are trying to destroy. Mm. How about C13 as a white starting move? So instead of uh, D9, C13 uh, attachment. C13, yeah, this one is interesting. Um, this is a nice technique. So you're Usually you wouldn't play this move because the opponent gets very strong, for example, mm -hmm. like this. But you get quite some move to um, to build build some eye space. So, for example, like this, if we imagine black plays like this, white is almost already alive. <laughs> uh, mm. Yeah, but white also gave white something in the sense that this corner yeah. is yeah. gone which weakens the white top side. So in the best case, I want to invade without giving the opponent too much on the other side. But if it is, this would also definitely be an idea. What I don't like about this, that with the next move, black directly defends the cutting point at F13. So you can never use this. When I have a stone here and my opponent maybe played from this side, I could have used it in a different way or maybe even at some point cut. Right. All right, but I would like to move to the next example because uh -huh. this was just maybe the example to show some of my um, general, um, general ideas and general thoughts on invading. Let me get to the next one. This one is very interesting. I found this game I played it in the Congress 2018, and this is a game um, where both players can probably still invade, and this happens as well very often. So many invasions are not invasions in the early game, because as I mentioned, oftentimes the area you want to destroy is not bigger than something you can build. And both players took this as an example. So we both tried to build something very huge. <laughs> I, can, I can see that. How oh, that even came up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's say I was weaker back then. <laughs> but, uh, this, this is very interesting because now Black finally decided, so if I play like this, maybe I'm not winning. So if the game just continues like this. So mm. Black decided to invade and Black has the right to do that because White still has some weaknesses that can be used. 
but also Black's area on the left is very open and can can be invaded and also Black has some weaknesses. Oh. So if you think about a spot where you could invade, so you have to keep in mind there is this weaker weakness here that you can use in different ways. You can cut here, mm -hmm. but you could also just extend and maybe clamp here. There are many moves, but you don't know how to use it yet. Mm. So maybe you can play something else first. Mm, Black's cutting points on... are towards the top where he has F17 stone supporting. Uh, yeah, blacks, but uh, I guess we are talking about white side, eh? Yeah, first we are talking about white, but after that I also want to talk about black, so you can already think about how right, to invade right. black. Right. So, for example, yeah. Also, there is a weakness around... I mean, you can imagine that maybe if black has a move here, there could mm. be a cut there left, so... You could use that at some point. So, yeah, I'm waiting for suggestions. Yeah, so chat, what is uh, your idea? There are many possibilities, I think. Uh, it is not so clear. Um, just you should have some concrete plan. Yeah. Mm, but it's something like B6, B6. Ah, right, yeah, you're talking about that already. But uh, the right side first. <laughs> yeah, we can <laughs> talk about that afterwards. <clears throat> so I will give me, uh, maybe I'll give some, uh, some moves and you can choose your favorites. Uh -huh. One of them is this one, next one is this one, then there's this one, and this. One, two, three, four. Uh, Dave said R11. R11, yeah, okay, so that's two. And Q11 with some ideas of aiming for L14 cut. Yeah, okay, so let's maybe look at that. That too. So this move is nice because it is direct. The opponent kind of has to has to answer the this attachment. Otherwise, black, for example, if white censors this, black will have some nice forcing moves here. This can still be uh, challenging, but I would well, actually, maybe white has to do that, because if white just goes up, then black can also use this Santi move, and maybe Hane here, and already try to make some kind of call. Right. So, when you invade, co is oftentimes already good enough. Um, so you shouldn't have too high ambitions to live without any conditions. Often, sometimes you can do that, but core can already be be quite nice. Mm. So this shoulder hit, I like it a little less because it is not threatening white directly. So now white could say, okay, I defend one of my other weaknesses, so this side, and black can only mm. go down. Right. And white can maybe defend again. So maybe black can still live here but it is already harder because white got to defend the weakness and black doesn't didn't get any clear forcing moves what my opponent played was this one and this one is kind of a question because i could say okay i want to kill it all mm -hmm. or i could say let me defend and you defend and then i do something else or maybe i add another stone this is probably what I should have done, but I went for the aggressive. I think, I'll, uh, this is, I think I'll make a snowballing invasion with 
J7, K7 and L5. J7. Wait, where is J7? Ah, yeah. K7. Yeah, yeah. And L5. Yeah, that's also something kind of scary for, for White to think about. So, just, uh, this was something that, yeah. yeah. Right. This is also a weakness. Uh, I forgot to mention this kind of. Um, but the question is if it if it is enough by itself, you kind of need to combine the things. But actually, if I look at it, there is lots you can do here because if you, for example, cut this, at some point, white not might not even be um, alive. But here, white can still run, fortunately. So you have to be smart and combine the things. And also, this is also about like uh, just fixing e for incente. <laughs> ah, okay. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah, yeah, there are many, many things to be considered here. But yeah. after this cut, black can use this peep. Black can use this attach. And it is actually not so hard anymore for black to do something. Um, I don't remember exactly how it went. I know that eventually I tried to kill very hard. My opponent made some mistakes, but still managed to live. So. It was that difficult to kill this because there are so many weaknesses of white, especially if you mm. think about this now. <laughs> actually, black can already cut like this. Yeah. And that's kind of destroyed already. Oof, yeah. Dangerous. So let's maybe talk about the left side because that is, I think, a bit harder, mm -hmm. but still should be possible to invade. Yeah, so, so chat was also talking about the like sun sun invasion here that it is probably killable without core or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sun sun is so if black wants to kill the sun sun, it is like usually what Han is here. And then after this, there is this call. Mm -hmm. But black can also try to kill it like this. But then the circumstances yeah. have to has have to be really really good for black. So mm. white can get this like this, and then black can kill it. But now it is about <laughs> sides. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. So let's actually look at it. How to use this? White should cut. And if black extends, I don't think there is anything super direct that works. Mm -hmm. But if I look at this, for example, it is getting really scary for black because now there is a ladder. Right, and there is a, some kind of ladder breaker, Atari perhaps, or... So if we look at this, actually white already got something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this is a disaster for, um, for black. For sure. So black cannot fight super hard here. Um, there is, I think, another way to kill the, the sun sun, which is something like... Um, Directly something weird. Uh -huh. This move exists. Mm. And then maybe when white plays here, you have to let white out right away. Right, yeah, okay. It's mm. actually, actually <laughs> scary for white because black is so strong on the outside. Mm. But we can prepare it. So there is not only that corner, there is the weakness around here. And then there is also the gap here that white can use. Because if black doesn't answer here, there is this push, uh -huh. which cuts here in center, and then there is this group all of a sudden that has a problem. Yeah. Right now, black can still do something about it, but now white can get these in, 
and uh, uh. connect. So there are some problems. So I would maybe maybe start off with the move here and then hope or maybe I don't even have to hope because I know that there is something. <laughs> Black should probably defend something either like this or maybe maybe like this. And mm -hmm. then I can still use the forcing moves on towards the left group. Right. And try to make eyes like this. Mm -hmm. So this is already, I think, really hard to kill. Yeah. Um, but maybe it is still possible. So, but there is still some weakness left around here. This threatens the cut at J15. So if Black has to connect, then White can uh, almost cut off something else as well. So if White cuts first here. So this is how you use the weaknesses. Mm -hmm. you, you can use them directly, but oftentimes there is nothing working really directly. So there is nothing here with the cuts or this. Many people try to directly do this and then mm -hmm. they exchange all these and they realize there is nothing. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a bit smarter. You have to play moves around it like this. Wait, where am I? <laughs> like, for example, also this move. And if now Black has to choose, do I defend the corner? Mm -hmm. But then there can be some story, um, maybe like this and then also with this cut. If we imagine something like this can already, could already be enough to live. So there is lots to consider. Yeah. Okay, so let me go to the next example. Look around randomly and you won't get anything. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a, maybe one of the examples that are a bit more about the question if we should actually invade. Um, in the game, so Black is actually on points quite good. And um, I, I was Black, but I decided to invade here. And eventually my opponent got to attack me and I didn't respond where, very well. So mm -hmm. it got risky. But if we think back to the question, is the area that I want to destroy bigger than something I can build myself because this area if we imagine that white can add another move let's say black place here and white place here there is actually still quite some space to reduce from here maybe and also this honey still exists mm -hmm. so if white would actually play like this it is maybe 15 points mm -hmm. At the maximum. Yeah, and White has to pay a move there to actually yeah. make it. Yeah. And and Black, yeah, White has to pay a move, and Black also got this one. So if I mm -hmm. think back now, I would have probably played either that Kosumi or this. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy if Black adds an uh, if White adds another move like this. Yeah. So the area that I enhanced was this left side which is a bit smaller than the top but the top looks bigger than it is since it is still open and at the moment i invade um with a move white can actually reduce this left side quite a bit for example mm -hmm. playing like this and then attacking so mm -hmm. While I will be weak, White will lose those 15 points, but actually can get them back somewhere else, maybe. So this yeah. is kind of how the game went. And White got to... White probably didn't continue super well after this, but 
already like this, there is some some danger for black and white can still keep something of of those top points. So actually, you invading there made made that white wall useful because yeah, this, uh, this... that that white wall isn't used for territory, but. Uh, uh as an influence and you made uh, made that influence like uh, useful by invading there yeah yeah so especially in this case i was already kind of good on points so i shouldn't mm. take this unnecessary risk i think this is a way to play when you are behind and you want to mix things up and say ah my opponent will probably not be able to take profit from the attack but um, when you're good and and kind of leading then you can just not invade and enhance yourself first mm, mm, mm. so yeah this uh, example is very important i think even though there is no specific technique on how to invade yeah this game is interesting. Uh, this is a game I played against Anti, and I'm black. <laughs> nice move. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, this move is probably a bit too, too slow. Black could play a bit bigger, yeah. or like yeah, yeah. this, or even something around the center could be good. Mm -hmm. But I played here, and now's the question for white. Um, how to invade this, or is it even necessary to invade this? Because um, the first thing we have to ask ourselves, ourselves, so does white have something else to enhance? There is maybe this left side, mm -hmm. or actually the top side also is something quite big. And then the question is, what can black next move? Black's next move be so. If black plays another move for the center, let's... Yeah, this is so hard to find the exact move, I never know, but let's just say this one. Yeah, it feels like after J5 it's hard to find even like next move, which is like big enough, because J5 made it uh, already smaller. Yeah, but actually this move is still kind of pretty big, and I think in this case it is probably possible to do both for white. Um, mm. I think like this, white can still make the game good and and kind of balanced or maybe even better for white because white can still reduce this in an annoying way. But Anti actually chose to face this area right away because he believes that this is the most important thing to do right away, so he does it right away. Oh. And he played this shoulder hit. Ooh. So yeah. this is kind of a reducing move, but since black is so strong everywhere, you could also call this an invasion. Because if black plays, for example, from this side, white cannot really connect to any, um, any stones nearby, so white has to live by, by itself. What happened in the game was I played here and then white still had the guts to jump this even though I can cut off and, and, and close white like this. But there are some weaknesses in black's shape. So white has this stone at um, A that he can use maybe by extending at B or attaching at C. Then there is also the the gap here. So maybe if A is used, there can be some problem on the stone set E. And then there is also cut here. So White had the the right feeling that he could still survive here, even though Black is quite strong and it is not so much space. But there was enough. There were enough weaknesses to to right. live here. Uh, uh, also said like uh, if he would have played top uh, left, he would play e twelve. Uh, the jumping move. Ah, there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, this one. Hmm. 
yeah, so also kind of facing the center. It's not only doing one thing, it is enhancing mm. the own um, areas also on the left and at the same time looking at the center. Looking into the center yeah. Uh, yeah. quite a bit. So hashtag only yeah. pro things. <laughs> Can do what many things at the same time. White jumped, uh, making some eye sham, and I tried to because if I want to kill this, I first have to enclose this. I could try to take away some eye here, but then white can um, get out into the center even more, and I cannot really enclose this anymore. So white can just escape. Yeah. But the problem when I try to enclose this is that white will get more good shape. So in the game, it went something like this. Mm -hmm. And then white was still able to um, to live because because already now there is quite some good shape. So white can maybe run out this stone. Actually, I think that's what happened. Something like this. And then now white is threatening to cut off the bottom four stones. Black has to defend. And like this, white already made more eye shape and if white lives here then actually black has lost all the potential that he had there in the center so white mm -hmm. is going directly into the core of this this moyo and that's brave but it's also good because if you're confident that you can live then you should um, should do it and i can tell you i was probably even more afraid to lose this ter territory than he was afraid to die here. So uh, I lost this game pretty quickly because um, White got to live here. I even tried to kill more aggressively and it didn't work out. Um, and then I had nothing left, kind of. Mm. Aim for the heart of the Mojo. <laughs> That's yeah. a nice line to remember. So this is the... Oh, wait, let me see some other examples first. What did I have? Oh, no, I think this is the next example. Okay. So this example appeared already in my lecture on Tenuki, but the, now we are in the invasion. So there is the bottom area of black, the bottom right. And actually, in this case, it is not so clear whether white should invade or not, because white could easily also enhance the own the own area and it is also very big, the whole left side. But white chose to do something and which is to invade and uh, this is also a technique that happens quite often because white invaded here with the, with the move in the corner but not, not with the intention to maybe live directly, but to make some exchanges. So, for example, if black would have played like this, then white has the option, I guess most of you know this shape that is alive for white. But can try to kill it, but white can live like this. You should all remember this shape because it appears quite often. And I've seen many Q-level games where people died here so like this white can live but white doesn't have to do it right away so white can make this exchange and then enhance the own territory mm. because maybe black and that's what i chose to do in the game i went for for the kill and white actually cut here and let's look at what happened because all of these moves that white is playing they are center i have to answer them otherwise i will lose so much mm. so here i played aggressive and i aimed for the kill so i tried to take away white's eye shape but like this white gained some moves to look into the center Oh. and then attached here. So this is also a technique that you should keep in mind. Sometimes invading is not about I want to live there, but it's, it is about I want to get some moves so that I can reduce easy from easier from the outside. Let's maybe go back to, to this move. 
if white would have attached here right away it would be easier for me to play because i can for example just play here and now i'm even stronger so if white plays here now i can maybe even kill like this mm -hmm. so that's why white made the exchanges the exchanges early so to ask what i want and i said i want to kill it but i paid the price so that white can so that now I have to play a bit more submissive here. And what happened was this, white got these moves and I had to defend because there is the ladder. So I played this move and like this, white got some, uh, some nice exchanges on the outside and turned here. Uh, first these are and, and got to turn here, which is pretty big. I want to say that I'm not really sure that the action White did here was really the best thing to do because I still believe the fact that White ended up in Gota here um, is kind of kind of good for Black. But this is in general just a technique I want to show that you mm -hmm. first invade and die, but to get some some exchanges on the outside, right? That you would have gotten earlier. Yeah. Mm, the garden group is called tripod group. Yeah, yeah, that's Tri the tripod. Tri tripod. Right, was... tripod. <laughs> exact name. Okay, let's go to the next example. This is also a game I played against Anti. And um, yeah, so we have this situation. First question, again, is there something? So, what is actually there to invade? There is the the right side, which black is building. Other than that, there's nothing to invade. But black could, uh, white could also think of building something else first. So there is the top side that can be built. I will put the numbers. Maybe the top side can be built. Mm -hmm. Or the center. And if that is bigger than the right side, then we should just go for it by, for example, playing another Kema. So if black continues and we're happy to give this because the center is bigger, oh. then we should do it. But like this, black is quite happy because the right side is much bigger than the center because oh. Actually, it is always hard to believe, and it took me quite so quite a while to actually know this, that the center is nothing that you can easily build. But with more experience, you will you will trust this this uh, proverb. And uh, mm. because white spent quite some moves and still has to spend moves to um, to get into the center here and to uh, to make the points in the center, and then eventually black can still reduce from bottom and black has to answer all those to keep the center and then eventually black made only like 30 points let's say i didn't really count very accurately but black made the whole right side and has center as well so black will get everything else so this is just a short general thing so i believe and also anti belief that Invading the right side is worth it because it is the biggest area that black can build because black is also trying to build it in a large scale. If black was just building the the points on the second line, it would be okay. But black is actually also trying to build something around here and trying to swallow this stone. Hmm. So this is also something that you should keep in mind when when you invade. You can use stones that you are kind of that that everybody thought to be dead. So this triangle stone of whites, you shouldn't run it out as an invasion. Yeah, because use the zombies. It's quite easy for black to to attack this, but you can yeah. use stones to threaten this. For example, this stone is already quite annoying. If black plays like this then white can cover from here. So you use something, but Anti found a, a nicer move that is 
even more annoying kind of <laughs> can anyone guess yeah chat so. what is why it's more here some annoying move <clears throat> any ideas uh r11 is one guess yeah r11 is exactly the move nice mm. Nice job. This is so nice because it is um, directly threatening something. So if black doesn't answer, white can just connect and uh, and is kind of alive already. Mm. But if black answers, white will get more forcing moves. So for example, if black just goes up, white can honey again, uh -huh. defend, and then there's the cut. So black has to defend the cut, and white got these three stones to now make a living yeah. or to, to make shape. And if black maybe doesn't want to give that, but plays the honey, there is the honey on the other side. That is annoying. And now white can use these three stones, which is even worse. Um, what I did was this honey and I was expecting white to go up. I can go down and now attack like this. But this would have been too easy for black, so white chose to Hane here as well. Oh. And this is the f kind of one of the first times where these invasion uh, examples requires quite some reading, because oh. when you play this, it is only good if you know that you can live. So what I did in the game, I played like this, and I thought, I, I kind of misread this. I thought that this one um, can already kill white. And if that is the case, then white can easily lose the game here like this. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you invade, you need to read quite quite carefully. And um, But if white just lives there like that, I, I just lost all, all of those points on the right side. And eventually white managed to live and this is kind of where the game got got good for white mm, uh, mm. or let's say hopeless for black <laughs> so what would have been uh, black's uh, stronger move instead of uh, instead of like this mm -hmm. yeah so there is some other yeah well this is quite a while ago let me think about it so for example Black can just play like this. This is probably White's first intention. Uh, uh, don't you get the, just a letter or or something and more? That's actually just a letter. So this letter works. Right. And it's not really great. Black can do play letter breaker, but White won't die with this group. <laughs> so that's something that you don't want to do. Uh -huh. I could have connected right away, for example, with the idea of. But then white can also play like this. I want to cut and I take some direct profit, but white can still probably get out somehow. Huh. But basically the right way for black would be to, I mean, to not try to kill too hard right away um, because then I risk to lose a lot. I could try to mm -hmm. play like this, for example, as well, taking the eye shape, but now I made some cutting points, I created some cutting points, and white can easily just take advantage. Yeah. Actually, the way I played was probably okay, but I could have continued a bit better here. So white ha had to read this, um, whether this is alive or not. Mm. White can push here, and then Sumi. Mm -hmm. Black has to block. And this white's group is already alive. Oh. The way things ended in the game, if I block here, it is actually still not um, clearly alive for white. So white was pretty brave here. White also um, trusted in the fact that, that he can live here by getting out like this. So we looked at some crazy variation like this. 
<laughs> white is here, black has to kill like this. And then like, but maybe white shouldn't exchange this. And then white can maybe get out here. So white is trying every way possible to somehow get out. Uh, and and that's something that you need a lot of experience and uh, and reading skill for. Because mm. in the moment where white played this Hane, white actually had to read quite a bit already. But it is also sometimes just about the experience you have in these kind of invasions. So it's important mm. to try out these kind of deep invasions to get a feeling for it and uh, to improve uh, in invading at invading. Uh, because if you never do it, you will you will never really know. Mm. So I encourage the viewers to to try this out and to get a feeling for for invading even more. Um, and then invading deep because if you invade deep and you survive, it is oftentimes a very great feeling, and uh, you you um, can manage to just win games quickly like that. Because this game ended relatively quick after after white uh, after white lift here. Mm. Okay, so let's switch to the next example. Where is it? So many trees here, so many branches. Ah, this, okay, yeah. This is also more about specific technique. This is not, not much about if white should actually invade because if white just loses the whole bottom, then it is kind of over. And this is a game I played against our other fellow teacher, Jeff or my fellow teacher, and uh, I'm white and I have to try to figure out how to do something here. Uh -huh. So by when I do that, I check out the weaknesses there is. Let me mark them. There is the Atari I can use on this stone. Uh -huh. There is maybe if I get out here, I threaten to play Hane here and then there are these stones that I can use by maybe playing here or something because if I threaten to connect these I cut off the corner and I cut off the center so 9 and 10. So if you keep all of these in mind you have to try to combine it. I what I did was, or maybe let's, no, I will show some moves and then I want the chat to think. So let's go this far and then collect some ideas. Yeah, so chat. Because now this black one group is also kind of cut off. Then I didn't mention the weakness around around two because this two is centered, so I can try to get to the right side as well. Mm -hmm. And this is more like a more high level difficult uh, invasion because things are not clear and you have to read a lot. In this game, I didn't have much time to read it, but I played more like from from experience and and shape feeling. Mm. Yeah, so chat, what is uh, White's plan here? What to Somehow, do? because if White lives here, then Black doesn't have much points left. Well, it depends how White lives. If Black gets the whole right side, that's maybe good. Oh, Antti is also saying this is tricky. This must be tricky then. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I eventually managed to live, but it is quite possible that this is uh, also too too late already to invade. So this is, mm -hmm. I think, something on the edge. Oh, Temiko. So if it's tricky, it can be anything obvious. Uh, 
Well, you have to have a plan. The first move can be obvious, but then the continuation can be maybe. not obvious. Maybe you are just so good that the, it is obvious for you. So share share, share your idea if you have some. Yeah, I, uh, I jumped here first Change because I think it's my other idea was to we, I could have played like something here and then try to live or oh, wait maybe black has to cut and then i could have tried to live like this this would also be a way and i'm not sure if this were uh, works whether this works but uh, i had the feeling that the defending the two stones is the most important thing because i wouldn't want black to to capture those even if i live so if i imagine something like this and let's say this is alive which i think it is then black captures the two center stones and is super strong and i wanted to get a living shape but keeping the black's weaknesses so sometimes when you invade living just living isn't necessarily enough you need to consider about how to live and do i leave some weakness behind if you can that's the best thing to do so i played like this and then black had to defend the bottom and now i took my chance to get out on the right side like this so here i can honey here because if black cuts I can cut as well an Atari here. So this is a an important technique. I could only do this because there is the the cutting point around here. Nice. So here you see more and more often how important it is that there are weakness in the opponent's shape to invade. Mm, yeah. So it looks as if white is actually dying, but White has the weakness in the corner, so it has to defend the corner. And now I use this weakness. Black went for the stone. And now actually Black oh, has to make this ugly shape, because otherwise I can run with this stone. So like this, and then I could... So in the game I actually went crazy and some stuff in the center mm -hmm. but here is another nice technique this is relatively specific i attach here uh -huh. so that i get the eye shape now i cut here so that i get this move in center so mm -hmm. you need to be sometimes if you invade you need to be very precise about the exchanges so that you can make the eye shape black also Black could only play like this. So like this, I made the eye on the right side in center, and now I only have to defend here. And I made a second eye like this. Nice. And if I would have just played like this, it seems that this invasion is pretty successful, and uh, and Black doesn't have that many points left. This is still a game, but yeah, actually Black played really aggressive, but... Um, got destroyed in the in the in all of the areas black could have also chosen to after this move maybe to play something i don't know more around those lines uh and making sure that black can get this and white list like this this would also have been an option for black and then defend somewhere else yeah so we were both kind of scared uh, I was scared to die but but he was also definitely scared to to lose every everything on on that area uh, there's also a question about like uh, if, if white is concerned about the health of middle group if black uh, mm -hmm. chicks lives uh, well J6 yeah. is uh, very much alive so yeah yeah, so that's also something we looked at quite heavily. Um, 
we came to some conclusion that black can try this move uh -huh. to cut and now white has the option to maybe play some kind of co but it's not really realistic right. so actually white has to use this cut uh -huh. And now the mess starts because I can play here and then clamp and you can have fun reading that out. Mm -hmm. What we came to as a conclusion, and she might correct us on this, that white can play this. Uh -huh. And then, for example, if black exchanges this and then comes back to kill the eye in the center, black can, white can, should be able to live like this. But we didn't read everything out. It is actually quite, quite a hard summing. So yeah, that's a very good question. And I'm not even certain myself. On, yeah, on so this. probably you should be a little bit concerned. <laughs> yeah. So that is your answer. Should you be concerned? <laughs> yes. Um, okay, let me check white, out. White B4 should be live 100% after black C2. B4 after C2. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. So All oh, right, yeah, yeah, now you have my idea. one I either yeah. in the center there. Mm -hmm. That cannot destroy this eye. Yeah. Right, 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 okay. Nice. It won't be the best move, but uh, it just leaves. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what we okay. want. So actually, I think I had one more example somewhere. Ah, yeah. This is a great example as well. This is also yeah. a game I played against Anti, and I'm black here. Mm -hmm. And it comes to this situation. So first question is again, there is the, the top area uh -huh. that white is clearly trying to build since 30 moves already. <laughs> like and, all the moves. <laughs> uh, maybe it is time to, to do something about it. Uh -huh. But uh, I don't know, maybe we could also say I keep continuing to build my right side. But at some point, if white really makes all of these points, it is mm. too much. Right. Also considering that white can still invade this right side and mm. probably not die. Right. So here the answer is relatively clear. Invading should be the right thing to do. Mm. Now, how to invade is the question because where are the weaknesses? There is something around like B16 area. Mm -hmm. E16, P16. Oh, yeah, right. So there is something the here. Is. So maybe you can get some peep in or something. There is again, in on this shape, there is always B that, that can be annoying later, but it needs some preparation. Also, we shouldn't forget about C because C is sente to connect. So this is a stone that you can use when you need it. Mm -hmm. And usually I would call this kind of single stone D a weakness as well, because you can always attach to such a stone and try to get some senti move. Right. So those are the ones. Um, so here I will tell you what I did. Uh, I was actually not really brave. I played, I played from the center with the idea that just reducing it is enough. So if white would have answered like this, I could have played like this. And I think this could be fine for black, but of course white def uh, cut this. And I was just fine with, wait, reducing most of it and making sure that, wait, how exactly was it? I don't remember it clearly right now, but the picture is something like this. So I reduced it up to that point and got a relatively safe position for myself. Um, 
think it was like this. And as you can see, white keeps most of it. Um, and black has the weak group. So point wise, it is fine for black to reduce like this, but the group itself still has to be taken care of. Mm, so, um, yeah, uh, it, I think it was something like this. And black still needs to add moves and white solidified everything yeah. without really spending a move because black made it. So mm. this could be a way to play, but actually you can be much, much braver here. Right. The, the move that Anti suggested me to do was this attach. Mm -hmm. And um, it looks quite scary. <laughs> because I immediately said, but what if black goes up and black cannot manage to live? But here, yeah, this is also again about experience and about um, trusting in in the theory that there is enough space here. Mm. So I can try something like this and, mm -hmm. for example, aim for a co right away. Right. Other than that, for example, if white cuts here, you can again use the technique to sacrifice some stones to get some, some good exchanges in the center. It is possible that black might not be able to live right away at the top, but black will be maybe able to get a lot of nice moves in the center and center. And even like this, it is actually hard to kill. If white plays like this, I can try to Hane. If white really wants to cut. Well, this is complicated. <laughs> right. Let me just think of something quick. So here, White has to defend something and then I can get even more forcing moves and push out here. And even though this looks scary, it is also kind of risky for white. Maybe this was not the best way to play for black. Black could have also simply extended out here and jumped out. So this is kind of not possible to kill anymore and and black went for the core mm. uh, extent seems safer okay yeah so actually we also even we even looked at this move mm. this is also an interesting technique so there is the cut left if white has to defend it, black definitely has enough space to get something good. So, for example, like this, white couldn't really just cut and black at least gets some kind of a core. Uh -huh. So maybe has white has to play from above and, and black can try to live like this. Also keeping in mind that there is this kind of a sente move. Yeah. So this is just something that you have to try out, uh, try out, and you you will learn more and more how to use the weaknesses and how many weaknesses are needed so that you can live. Uh, that is especially important. You need to know that there is something like C, and you need to know that there can be B, so mm. that you can combine them. Otherwise will just be able to reduce it a bit as I did and that was nothing so great. Yeah, so I could have been braver here myself and uh, yeah. that's something I encourage is all of the viewers to be. Is J18 something that you can uh, consider? <laughs> J18? <laughs> the, this is also interesting. The problem about this is again it's not uh, straight, it's, uh, like it's uh, yeah, not that yeah. direct. The yeah, shoulder yeah, direct, is more yeah. direct. This yeah, is something yeah. where white has lots of choices. White can kusumi something. White can, white will probably bump this okay. somehow. So you want the second line is 
pretty low. But if you can find something here, it is also interesting. But I encourage more like the attachments on mm. such a one stone. And if there's yeah. a honey, you can always also try the cross cut. So, and if extend, you already get more space. So, yeah, and also from above. Mm. Um, those were kind of all my examples. I want to repeat the most important, which I believe is, um, I actually had some difficulty to find many examples of good invasions because there aren't that many um, games where there are lots of invasions because oftentimes you shouldn't invade too early uh -huh. and um, you should build something for yourself first. So that is something you always have to check before you invade. Is it worth it? And then when you invade, you should check the weaknesses of the opponent um, and, and keep a certain flexibility so that you... Um, you can sacrifice some stones uh, and you don't have to make something live directly because then you will easily get heavy and you might die right away with the group. Yeah, and, like, uh, yeah. Uh, Antti says, uh, I don't think there's a, un anything like unified Moyo handling theory. Uh, unfortunately, since it's a very broad and interesting topic. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, it comes to a lot. A lot of times, it comes to down to like judgment, like uh, like we talked here. Like, uh, uh, can you can you build uh, anything bigger yourself, or should you invade? And if uh, like, if just reduction is enough, or or something like yeah, that. So it comes down to that kind of judgment, and like how much you have like weaknesses that you can actually use, and. Yeah. So every every situation is its own unique kind of situation. Yeah. So it's very hard to make any anything like, yeah, this works always kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I chose examples from my own games and not like the book. Mm -hmm. yeah. the book invasions. How to invade the bottom right corner, for example. I guess many of the viewers know variations there already, but yeah, in in real games you have to get creative. For example, in the top side here these aren't shapes that are common so you have to come up with something yourself yeah yeah so i guess that's everything i want to uh mention for for this lecture do you have anything else um, it'd be a lot of work collecting material ah yeah for book <laughs> but definitely would be interesting yeah yeah the, the, the book about this one would, would be like uh, also nice to read just uh, yeah it's just a different kind of uh, situation and uh, yeah a big kind of problems like it can be like combined with uh, full po full board problems and like uh, yeah but mm -hmm. as Ante said uh, collecting material for that one is a huge huge thing yeah um, yeah it was quite slight uh, sli slightly quiet day today but uh, yeah it was a nice topic. yeah Thank you. I mean I hope some people yeah. still watch it afterwards yeah. Uh, well, before we go, uh, I want to like, uh, uh, yeah, we have an announcement to do. Uh, yeah, Ante, Ante also reminded us uh, about uh, this thing. <laughs> I already spammed it uh, like uh, yesterday in in my channel uh, on, my, on my channel, and uh, yeah. So NGD is holding a Pixel Core tournament. Um, mm -hmm. It is a variant tournament. So like it like if you if you like. Uh, crazy variants. This is this is one of the best ones uh, because it's mine. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but, uh, like uh, re really, it is a very very interesting uh, interesting uh, variant. You invented but, uh, it. Uh, yeah, I invented it oh, nice. myself. Yeah, uh, nice. in China when we were like uh, studying Go uh, for two months. Uh, so like yeah, we we have to be playing it with Ante before on real board. And now it's also uh, available online. You can already play it on core.kahva.io. Um, I, I will put the uh, link also here. Yeah, to, uh, thank you, Atti. And then there is also the um, link to that article Antti wrote about it. Uh, there's like rules a little bit more in detail than in this poster, but like basically the idea is that you play two by two blobs of stones, 
Uh, so it's kind of like a zoomed in. Uh, so one one stone is actually made from four pixels, and those pixels can also like overlap. Like in the like uh, right uh, bottom right corner here, we have like a um, black stone, and it's covered like surrounded by like uh, six white stones, like uh, from both sides. So those white stones are actually like connected by Miai. Because if black plays the other side, white can connect from the other side. It's, yeah, it's kind of like a Miai connection already. Uh, that is a one one very basic Tezuji. And then there's the wall thing in the middle of the board there. Like It also comes very often that your stones just bend uh, <laughs> on top of each other. And uh, yeah, it, 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 you, you will find uh, many crazy, like a uh, crazy is because of this uh, overlapping, which is the heart of the heart of the uh, pixel core. Um, so tournament is held in October thirty first. So it's Halloween Eve, uh, or or is it, yeah, I guess yeah, <laughs> Halloween. So if you don't have any Halloween plans, uh, this might be your your uh, uh, Halloween entertainment. And we have a stream on this channel. Uh, that day uh, around 12, so like noon EET. Um, so it's a little bit earlier than we usually start, like one hour earlier, because that is uh, finish time. So uh, usually the lectures start like uh, uh, start like this one started uh, 1 p.m. EET. So it is one hour earlier than usually. That is a Saturday, if I remember correctly. Uh, there will be prizes. You can win like 80 euros or 40 euros as NGD vouchers, which you can use uh, either to like uh, the usual usual uh, uh, stuff like uh, NGD membership fee, but you can also like uh, just buy like one uh, one review or such such things from uh, NGD. Um, and yeah. Participation is free, so you don't lose anything, but you might win something. So, in case you want to already test it out, like uh, you can go to that uh, go.co uh, address and play yourself. You can play like other variants there also. There's like four four color go and Tetris go and hidden hidden move go and everything like that. So, uh, in in case you want uh, want to like uh, have fun, uh, that is a very very good way to do it and of course like uh, you find registration already on Nordic Codos' website uh, to the tournament and yeah the newest, newest one is Toroidal that is a very interesting one I want to try it myself also like you can combine different variants so you can play like pixel go together with to Toroidal Toroidal means that you don't have any edges the edges are connected to each other so it's kind ah, of like right, a right. donut shaped thing yeah so you can play that one also now there uh, that is a that is a new thing. So I, yeah, I, I wanted to try toroidal pixel go. That's <laughs> that's mm -hmm. crazy. Um, yeah. So go to register. There is already some players there. Uh, uh, before the stream, I saw there there is like six uh, six people uh, registered, and it opened yesterday. So we have we have like three weeks until this tournament. So yeah, plenty of time to. Uh, uh, train pixel go before that so you will crush everyone and get the get the first prize yeah uh, yeah and the stream will also try to comment on uh, the different tactics but nobody is uh, good and uh, good in this one if you are thinking like I don't know anything about this I, I suck at these kind of variants so does everyone else because this is <laughs> this is very mm -hmm. like a new and fresh kind of like a variant not not, not many people know about this so uh, we are all learning about this one um, yeah, nice. yeah. La, 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 la. let's go back to the screen. Yeah, hello, hello again. <laughs> so, um, if you want any more information about it, uh, you can you can talk in Discord or or ask us or anything. Uh, the tournament, uh, I guess, the format is still quite open. Like, what is it going to be? It depends how many participants we will get. But yeah, um, 
Uh, do we have anything else to add? No, I guess that's it. Uh, for now, that's it. Yeah. We'll see you at the next lecture, hopefully. Um, yeah, so uh, will there be lecture before that? Is it in two weeks or? So yeah, it should be in two weeks. Uh, the lectures are every two weeks at this time. So there will be one at the 24th. Right. Before yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So see you in two weeks on this channel. Yeah. And see you then. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.